I need to drill some really precise holes for these hinges. Welcome back to the shop. Not a project this time, an addition to a tool. I got this Wixy depth gauge for my drill press. Um, why do I need that kind of precision? Well, you don't need it, but it work, but it's nice to have. Um, I do have a project coming up where I have to drill some fairly precise depth holes, and I'll ignore on that in a minute. Um, so, this is obviously a Ryobi uh, drill press. Every drill press manufacturer makes their quill assemblies different. Uh, so, the instructions are rather generic. They're okay, they're good, fairly good, but they're rather generic on how to install this on, specific, on a drill press. Not a specific drill press, but just on drill presses in general. Um, in my case, I had to uh, do some, make some changes back here because uh, right where my finger is, and I'll show you in more detail, is the quill lock, and the distance between the quill lock and this uh, back of this part of the cast iron is small. So this was going to interfere with the quill lock. So let's get a little closer and um, give you a heads up on what I'm talking about. Added some uh, light for a better clarity here. Here's the quill lock. And uh, this is that shoulder in the cast iron casting I mentioned. And of course the readout, which is here. Now this bracket normally would come straight out, which would interfere with the quill lock. So what I had to do is bend this bracket and turn this bracket a little bit, a few degrees this way towards the front and make them coplanar so it would have enough room for the quill lock. Now I don't have to turn the quill lock all the way around. I set it so that locks it and that unlocks it. It comes with the drill bit and the two self-tapping screws that uh, mount this to the cast iron. So that's what I had to do to get mine to work on this particular drill press. Now I'm going to give you a quick rundown on how the darn thing works. So operation is pretty simple. Uh, you got, of course, the on-off, zero and hold button, millimeters or inches, or absolute and incremental readout. Now incremental readout, you can't zero it wherever you want, whereas with the absolute, you can zero it anywhere you want. So I'll be using that most of the time, probably all the times. So you turn it on, and you'll know we've got a uh, 478,000 reading on it. So I just hit hold the zero button. Boom, it's zeroed. Now, when you operate the quill, what's really cool is when you get down to a regular, like an inch increment, let's go to one 250. Oop. There, you'll notice you got a, a, a fraction onto the right there. So you get, when you get to a, an actual increment that we use in woodworking, like uh, that, oh, there you go, 530 seconds, uh, it flashes that, um, that fraction off to the right hand side. So, let's see it in action. Do we really need an excuse to upgrade our tools? Not really, but I kind of made an excuse. So a friend of mine has this game box that someone had modified earlier with some butt hinges that never really worked right, and when you open the box up to play it, it wouldn't lay flat. So what I'm using are these barrel hinges. They're like the sauce barrel hinges, but they're not sauce. I, they're all about the same, I think. These are eight millimeter, but the depth for these has to be fairly precise. Um, now these do not have the expansion barrel like the bigger ones do. You have to put two screws into it, or at least one screw and hold it in place, or you can epoxy them if you're careful. And this way, it, it closes the box up nicely, but when you, when you open the box up like this, not only will it lay flat, but there'll be almost no seam, visible seam, when the box is opened to itself. So let me show you now about what kind of precision I'm talking about here as I drill a hole. But first off, I use, um, not a sponsor, but I use uh, Lee Valley uh, Brad Point drill bits. And I've had this set for a gazillion years. The nice thing about the Lee Valley, as you can see in this picture, is the actual distance between the, part, the, the, the center spike and the wings is flat. So it gives you a good flat bottom. The other thing I like about these is, I don't think you can see it in the pic, in, in, on camera, but on the, on the wings themselves, there's a slightly rounded cutting surface that scores the fibers before the drill gets into the wood and starts removing material. 
So that gives you a really clean entry hole and doesn't no tear out. So Lee Valley makes these or sells them, and uh, I, I really like them. So anyway, let's let's go over here and we'll do a quick hole drill, kind of see how precise I can get it my first time using this thing. Let's check this thing up in the drill press. Make sure I got enough clearance. Now my first step is I want the, the flat of the bit to be the bottom of the hole. So what I want to do is set this so that the spike, can't see it with my arm in the way, the, the center spike and the wings are, are, are dug into the wood, but the flat part of the drill bit is actually on the surface. I'll lock it up, turn this on, it's at 480 thousandths minus, I'll set that, turn it on, set that to zero. So that's set to zero now at that point. So now I want to drill the hole. Now I'm going to, I'm going to bring the camera up right to the, to the uh, readout so you can see what's going on. And I'll drill the hole. It's going to be kind of awkward because uh, the camera's going to be right about where I stand. So let's, let's take care of that and you can watch me drill the hole. See if I can get it right to 250 thousandths or quarter of an inch. Okay, so at zero set, I'm ready to drill the hole. Let's turn the drill butt off and go to 250 thousandths or a quarter of an inch and see how close I get. 100, 200, clear 20, 30, there it is, Oop, a little bit over, 252. Well, I read a quarter of an inch, so uh, let's, let's take a look and see what, that, see what that looks like. So how good did I do? Let's see. Um, this is a uh, eye gauge, fractional uh, vernier dial indicator. Vernier, vernier indicator, so let's measure that hole. All right, it's a little off. I still have some more practice to do. See if I can get this in the camera. It's, it's focusing on me. Don't focus on me. There you go. So it's uh, about a 30, 30 second of an inch too shallow. But with practice, I'm sure I'll get better. Now, keep in mind is they're slopping the drill press. So things aren't as precise as they could be. I mean, this is not a, this is not a milling machine, so you're not going to get that kind of precision. But as I practice with it, I should get better. Now I can, when I drill the holes for the box, I can get them really, really close, probably right on if I do it just do it correctly. Turn that off. So this is not really a review. I'll do a review of it later, um, along with the you know the combination of this and the drill press at some point. But right now. Um, I think I'm happy with what I've got here. It's going to get me really close to the precision I want for some of the jobs that I do. Now, you know you can also use the depth stop and all that kind of stuff or stop collars around a drill bit. Well, this depth stop is okay, but occasionally it slips. And putting, I've got some collars, but they're kind of cheap and I don't like using them. I'm you know, clamping down on my drill bit with a uh, set screw. So this this will afford me a better... Uh, Better precision. Oh yeah, then there's the old blue tape trick. You're not going to get within a couple of ten thousandths with that. So there we go. That's it. Um, so uh, hit the uh, hit the like button, subscribe, tell your friends about it, and until next time, make great things out of wood.